back this week's tech and world news linked to us a singularity and some other high mighty type stuff that we're thinking of adding in and maybe doing some more of that because That's great. blah 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 blah. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. And welcome. Welcome to Hive Mind. He smells like cheese. I don't yeah, know. I don't I've been eating it. a lot of cheese. <laughs> he doesn't. Dude, uh, this week <laughs> we just watched like the oh, most amazing TED talk. Holy shit balls. We have seen in a long time. It is it's incredible. It's it, absolutely incredible. What you, you said it pretty much proved the high of mind. It, it proved the high. It, it showed actual it analysis of how people yeah. are talking and how it's going through. But we'll speak about it. It'll be one of the topics. But my God, I have not been blown away by a TED Talk in ages. And this did it. This is just... It was awesome. Very, very awesome. Yeah. So anyway, that's one of the stories we'll be speaking about. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, and then also uh, uh, software replacing lawyers, I guess. Fair enough. Yep. Cool. Uh, I have realistic robots. Robot. And then I also have... <laughs> Sometimes I doubt your commitment to Sparkle <laughs> I do. Sorry, the next one I have is a, a, a thing that Nathan set up over the weekend where we actually tracked what people were drawing on our walls, which was pretty damn awesome. It was awesome. And uh, then our singularity topic, we're actually going to talk about hive mind activism, like Anonymous and all of those other guys, and uh, what they've been doing and what that means for the future and stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited awesome. to do that. It's going to be an awesome episode. I am really pumped for this one. <laughs> I really yeah. am. Awesome 51 episode. Drunk it's it's 11.30 at night. So. We've been drinking quite a lot. Well, not as much as we did for the 50th one because we had champagne and we sculled all of that. Oh, that, that was... That was I'm yet to, yeah, sorry about the delay, guys. I'm yet to edit that one. It'll be up soon. So, yeah, and, and people will know about this. they will be I very know. disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> let's start with realistic robots. This thing is freaking creepy. Yeah, I know. It's not and really Except for the nice. eyes. No, well, it's see, not... that's it. it. It's very realistic, apart from... I'll just mute it. And apart it's... from its yeah, And eyes. they pick, like, a child rapist look. It doesn't I really... I know. This guy is not <laughs> an doesn't... attractive man at all. Yeah. Well, anyway, the, the, the basic idea is that they actually came up with, like, a realistic robot as much as possible. It's from Osaka University. Um, was that? Yeah, it's a... Or, I don't know. Japan, somewhere, I'm guessing. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, well, then... Well, the whole idea, like what they actually got, how they got money was saying that they were studying emotional affordances in human robot interaction. So in other words, I wanted to build like, you know, a really realistic looking robot and they attached some stuff afterwards. But yeah. apparently, uh, according to this robot, the way, the reason it's so realistic and so lifelike is because they actually have someone in another room or connected to it that actually mimics the facial expressions of that person. Right. So that's kind of cool. We need a new couch. Yeah, no, we really do. So I, if they... Wait, they taught it by mimicking... No, no, no. If someone is actually just... mimicking it, I'm pretty certain. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, like there's someone sitting there with sensors attached to their yeah, face yeah. doing uh, all the movements? Yeah, is this that... is what I've actually seen here. Is that the what the reason why that? the robot's <laughs> movements and expressions seem so realistic is because they are controlled by an operator who uses a motion capture and facial uh, tracking okay. system. That's pretty cool still. That's... Uh, that's not bad. Like, I mean, the very fact that you've got, like, you know, the robot actually mimicking yourself. I mean, we're talking about holograms yeah. and, you know, like, uh, not Skype and all the, the, the holograph. The hologram thingies. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> the, the hologram the hol preliminary. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You know, where they had the cameras actually following your facial structure and then they mimicked it in a hologram. This is the yeah. same thing, but with an actual fucking robot. Like, that's intense. That's insane. Awesome. You get, like, a universal one of them. Like, you... I don't know. You have the... I love how we always manage to do these when the train's coming. Right when the train is coming. It's infuriating. It's genius work. But say like you have like a blank robot or someone you could actually put it to. You say, hey, I'm going to start recording myself now. Say you have like a visor over the top. Yeah. And so you actually project yourself into that robot's body. And then it mimics you exactly. You like actually a, control a full-on robot. Like surrogates. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly like Bruce surrogates. Bruce yeah. Terrible movie, but yeah. it gets a point across. <laughs> it did. Anyway, that's a brief one about that. It's kind of cool. We're at that point with androids at the moment. So we get it now. We get it now. Mm. Still in the uncanny valley. You wouldn't want to root that android though. No, okay, well, he'd probably root you. Root. <laughs> oh, right, because they're... Uh, Andrew. Andrew uh, Android hacking phones, Andrew. yeah, right. You wouldn't you be, like, <laughs> unabashedly Australian. I was like, that's just not... We wouldn't want to root an cool. apple. I mean, that's just nasty. Mm. You core it out first. That's it. And even then, it's still tight. <laughs> anyway. Your mum. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, this is a cool article. Just briefly mention it. Uh, it's titled, Armies of Expensive Lawyers Replaced by Cheaper Software. So basically, uh, we we talked about this a little bit before. How Watson? Yeah, Watson. Watson was going to um, weren't they thinking of using that in the legal system? Yes. To actually help uh, judges kind of analyze different data and previous cases to say like, hey, this has actually happened before, so you know you should give them this uh, you know 
decision or whatever. Hmm. That's right. Since that's how our legal system works, which has its merits sometimes and sometimes doesn't work. I know, when you analyse what lawyers actually are, they're just people who actually know the system really well and what you can do and yeah. what you can't. It's very... well, we've talked about this before, like the fact that um, yeah. getting a, you can actually get a good lawyer that actually can help you get off some kind of... At such an inefficiency. That's, that's, <laughs> you're having a good lawyer versus a bad lawyer. I mean, not, yeah, that is a that horrible way. inefficiency. And the fact that the good ones, the good ones, are paid much more than the bad yeah. ones. That's just such a massive bias, and they call this the justice system. For a societal construct, I mean, there's no real Pretty basis horrible. here to actually, like, you know, within you know, science or anything like that. We're not progressing towards anything with law. It's entirely a social construct, and then the yeah, the differences between the two. Right? Yeah. Anyway, like so computers. so we've been saying for a while now that it would be awesome, and it's inevitable that it's going to happen, that the entire legal system is just going to be completely controlled by computers, because yeah. they're, rational, they're rational beings. They're They'll say, you did this... Beings. Well, yeah, never called them a bean before. They're rational beings. Dun, 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 dun. They're not emotional or subjective, so they actually, they can actually look at everyone's situation and work out, you know, what's the best scenario, yeah. who was at the wrong and who was in the right. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they don't actually work that because lawyers don't do that. They just present the case. They present all the facts, and then they still then they you're judge. still judged by your jury of your peers. I, I yeah. still don't really <laughs> like the idea of a yeah, computer judging weird. me. The lawyers I think are okay as a computer, not a judge or a jury, because fuck that. <laughs> really, I, I'd prefer a computer to judge me. Than a jury or a, yeah. a judge, like nah. it'd be so much better because then you just you can't be sure that they, they may not the, know the intricities of what happened. But the people in the jury are just random strangers. That are, it's it's yeah. like winning the lottery. It's but they might. Well, I, I just don't trust computers enough. Like, give me two hundred years when computers like are amazing. Two hundred years, maybe a hundred years. Even that's pushing it. Give it, give it 30 years, uh, 20, 30 years. I don't want to. Compare there won't be any humans people. in the legal system in twenty, thirty years. I, I, I disagree with that. I'll, I'll go... I love our predictions on this, because in 20, 30 50, years, nah. I'm going to come back all decrepit nah, and like hobbling. You won't, because it's... Be like, in your face, man. In your face. We won't, because it won't at least be the public perception, because we'll still be alive, and we've all, we're all grown up with that idea of like a computing judging us saying, like, no, that's, that's wrong. Well, the older generations can go get fucked. Yeah, but we'll be... What is it, like 50? Yeah. So, we'll, still, we'll, be, the ju we'll be the judges. Well, our generation can go get fucked. <laughs> If they're not happy with a computer judging, like running our legal system, then they can go elsewhere. Go join the army. I'm, I'm going to go 50 to 100 years at all. <laughs> Even 50, I think, is pushing out. Yeah, I didn't even read this article at all. Sorry, yeah. Basically, <laughs> I, think the, I think the general gist of this thing was um, that there's software now that analyzes all the documents. Because it's not so much, um, they're not so much at the moment doing, uh, working out, you know, who's in the right, who's in the wrong. Right. Uh, they're going through all the documents, because you know how... When you have a legal case, you have all these documents that kind of need to be scanned and analysed to work yeah. out, you know, who's at fault. And they're saying that now it can be done. Oh man, now it can be done a hell of a lot quicker with computers and just you know, twenty four seven done in a few days for a lot less cost than it did before. Awesome. And so that way they're actually working out that you know the legal system's kind of being replaced by computers. Hell's so yeah. instead of lawyers being paid all that money to go through all the documents and work out all the precedents and the cases before that, yeah, yeah. computers can just go through and instantly, you know, do it. Wow. Is that what lawyers actually get paid a lot for, is actually analysing, like, you know, reading documents and going over the past cases? And they get paid that ridiculous well, amount each hour? Yeah. God damn it! Well, they, they have to go through... This off even more about lawyers! <laughs> God they damn! They definitely have a culture as well, like... <sighs> Know a few people that are lawyers, and you can see the culture. They just they get kicks out of screwing people over, yeah. and suing people. Well, they like like, like the power because they know the system. It's like you guys are yeah. douches. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's got a happier stories. Yeah. No. <laughs> that got Damn you, lawyers. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Next one. Oh, this is a fun, fun story. An awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know what I'm loading up because nothing's up there at the moment. An awesome, awesome, awesome thing that Nathan created over the weekend, not last weekend, the weekend before, which doesn't mean anything because you don't know when this was released. <laughs> <laughs> created this thing called nightcrawford.com you should check it out see if anything's up there at the moment hey. doubt it will be yeah I took it offline after yeah. a few days because no one was using it anyway well the basic idea is set up a projector projecting on to a whiteboard that we acquired from the uni they were chucking it out we put whiteboards up in our living room it looks great so three meter long ones oh yeah Wait. metric <laughs> And then uh, also put on a whiteboard where if you went to Night Crawford, you could draw on a whiteboard and anything you drew on a whiteboard we would, would be projected onto the wall. Yeah. It was freaking awesome. It was, it was the ball. Amazing. For like three days straight, like pretty much 24-7, there was 
people just drawing on our whiteboards yeah. non-stop. So in our living room, people were drawing. And we had like a, a webcam set up so people could watch it actually being drawn. Yeah, because that, that, that was the gimmick of it. Really. That was the gimmick. You could actually watch it be projected onto yeah. the whiteboard. So there's a webcam set up with a mic and everything. Yeah. So as you walked into the fridge and all that to like go get a beer or something or do anything. <laughs> having a conversation yeah. with these randoms on, on yeah. the wall. You're having a conversation with the wall. It's very creepy. <laughs> it was awesome. Like... We were actually looking at trying to do like a permanent setup somehow, but um, the projector we're using wasn't a good one. It was some shitty one that's likely to blow. Again, up. we got for free off the uni. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Thanks, uni. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what we're saying is that the thing that would be amazing is I have no idea how you'd implement uh, implement this or get it past the whole cultural constraints. But imagine you go down to like your your local town or city center or whatever CBD. I love this. And area. you have a dedicated wall, like maybe near the town hall or some area like that where it's just a projector on there and underneath a link saying go to this link and you can draw anything on this on this wall and it's just projecting anything that anyone draws it's a collective lights. mind of that city just actually projecting yeah, what they want up there I mean imagine like we're going to talk about hive mind activism all of that later on imagine that that you walk into the center of say all different towns around everywhere and they're all projecting the same message just saying that like yeah. help out this help out this help out this this is the big thing like you know Bradley Manning Bradley Manning Bradley Manning all of that stuff yeah be Granted, there were a lot of penises drawn and on the And swastikas board. and horribleness. And at one point, one of our good friends, who we couldn't work out because it was all mm. anonymous, decided to post up our numbers on there saying, like, you know, for blowjobs, call Tristan, for rim jobs, call me. Actually, I was and... rim jobs. Oh, really? Yeah, you were Congratulations. I man. know, I know. I've oh, worked up to that point. <laughs> worked to that point. But you got a call from a CIA, didn't you? No, no, some, some guy in Queensland I had a conversation with. And he wasn't a CIA. It was fun. No. He answered the phone saying he was a CIA, didn't he? No, he, he didn't say anything. <laughs> he was silent uh, for a while. Um, then have a conversation for me, and then after we hung up, he like wrote on the board like, "Oh, he's a nice fella." <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I am. Oh, uh, awesome, buddy. But yeah, so that's really cool. And um, so that would be an awesome thing. We're also saying like, say with the hut overlay, um, people have mentioned this before. Like, imagine with a hut overlay system, you're just walking down the street. If anyone can actually tap into that feed, they can write messages as you're kind of walking along. Yeah, like, they yeah. can say, "Hey, like, go there. Hey, check this out. Hey, look out. You're about to trip over." Or well, you could do that within your house, like we had to use a projector to actually project onto the wall, but if you had the HUD overlay, yeah. you could actually designate whole massive swaths of like, I don't know if that's the right word, but all oh, swaths, you know, swaths, whatever, <laughs> the roof and all of that to actually be, anyone can write whatever they like here, like yeah. make it totally open. It'd be better if it was a screen rather than a projector, because mm. it kind of heated up the entire room. It did, that was hectic, and again, walking through, but running all night. It could be another great way. I think this could be a great thing, I'd love to see a mural like that, even if it was on someone's private property, like a giant big screen it was just permanent there yeah someone who has a business like a tourism business why not do that yeah you just have to be aware of the swastikas and the penises yeah <laughs> small price to pay and we'll live streaming too play with live stream uh, just live stream.com like play with you stream a few other sites before but I'm um, actually we should have done this now like to yeah. live stream it but then no one will watch it so yeah. next week we're going to live stream high 45 scary we're going to do it it'll be awesome yeah, yeah let's kick we'll, some off. we'll get a computer set up here or maybe we could just do it in an hour we're uh, holding computers why not? I don't know. Anyway, anyway well, we'll try that, but uh, we'll send you out a link like just before we do it, like maybe a few hours before we do it. Yeah. So, check. We'll see what happens. Facebook page. Why not? We'll see if we can do it, and then if it does work, we could be like, hey, we could promote it next time. That's something cool if people watch it, though. That's like. Uh... <laughs> so, please watch it. Anyway, um, let's go to the epic one. Is this the last one? Yep, last one. Okay, let's cover this. This one was fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. Yes, with the capital F. Um, MIT scientist captures 90,000 hours of video of his son's first words, graphs it, analyzes it, runs data analysis on it, like, to the nth degree. Yes. Pretty awesome. Um, his, guy, his name is Deb Roy, um, and he basically what he did is he installed in every single room in his house, he put a fisheye camera in the ceiling, looking down, and a microphone. And so, every single room, 24-7, every single day, for I think like five years was it? I think it was five years, yeah. Five years of his son's life, like as soon as this, his uh, newborn son came home, they started recording and they recorded everything. Um, it used up 200 terabytes of data. Surprisingly um, small considering the amount yeah. of video. And 90,000 hours of video. And then he basically, he's an MIT scientist, so I'm guessing in, in, in the computer science lab somewhere in MIT. And he got his students to... Yeah, and he got PhD students to actually run analysis on it, and he's been running analysis on it ever since. Um, this article's pretty cool, but go watch the TED Talk as well, because that's kind of the most amazing thing. Blow your um, mind. Yeah, what what do you remember for the TED Talk? 
Oh, all I know is it has been the most influential TED Talk that I've watched in probably a year. Like, it is just incredible. It awesome. It's up there with the Kevin Kelly TED Talks. It's just ridiculous. The, the main thing was like the, the way he visualized the data, I think, was what actually really brought it home. Because, I mean, he was recording all of that data and stuff and he was yeah. going, recording like, you know, how his words actually grew. Like he had a voice analysis of the word water, how it evolved from the word gaga to gaga to gaga. Yeah, <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. But what really blew me away, like at that point it was, oh, this is cool. Like, you know, going, oh, that's not bad. What yeah. blew me away was when he applied the same uh, analysis of how his son developed words onto the global world. Onto yeah. the internet, speaking about things, took all the the mainstream media and all the the channels on TV and actually analysed. Because um, he said that the feedback mechanism is how people talking about it. Yeah, like say he was saying that he, loop. he was saying like in the ha- in his house, there's the environment. That's cause that's essentially like the, the TV show, the the content, blah blah blah. Yeah. But then as he's speaking, that's kind of the feedback mechanism. And so what he did with mainstream media and all the TV shows is the feedback mechanism was all the tweets about it. Just yeah. use Twitter, like just Twitter and uh, TV shows and just analyze what are people talking about with what content yeah. and then did all the connections in between. And it actually showed how, how the language yeah, was evolving and what people were talking about. Say you had like uh, virtual skyscrapers, like, you know, just mounds of what people were talking about out of all these things. Like, you know, had the office mound, had like yep. Jersey Shore, which was massive. <laughs> sad there, but all of these things. You can actually watch how like language progresses by applying the same, like, you know, the semantic linking and all of that mm. through that data you can actually start to see how the hive mind is learning and thinking in the exact yeah. the exact same way that a two-year-old kid is starting to learn how to speak we can do that same analysis on a two-year-old child to the current hive mind and that's and just the, fucking the, mind the, the simple graphs he did looked like a brain it yes. was all the connections internet, internet, you know, interconnecting between the different nodes and it was a freaking brain. It was, it was just the neurons with the individual pieces of content of people talking yeah. about it and then he even used the word yeah. like connective tissue and stuff, actually all the, yeah. the points going through. It's ridiculous. And I mean, that's how, that's how the brain works. It's just neurons get you know, more and more stimuli and they actually and they create connect. feedback mechanisms and yeah. loops and connect, you know, stronger and stronger connections. You, you apply Where? the same connections, keep on going again and again and again. Yeah. Hey, that connection becomes stronger. Hey, that becomes a part of your actual mind and how you operate. How does the hive mind work? Yeah. How do you get opinions about what things are? You get a, you get a piece of content. You get an idea. Say like Jersey Shore. You get like different people discussing yeah. it. You get a recursive theme throughout it. It's crap. It's crap. It's crap. That yeah. becomes a strong connection. Yeah, it's crap. That's like the like Jersey Shore is like the external stimuli hits all the neurons, all the people in the hive, yeah. they all interact and like it, it goes through the system and you know they work shit out and mm-hmm. they, they spit out a message. Yeah, that's it. That's it. They've, like got, the they've got a collective <laughs> yes. idea and opinion of what it is. Yeah. And we can measure that now. Holy shit. <laughs> like, my and God. Proof of the hive mind this is right the hive there. Mind. My God, it's, it's just incredible. Like, I so we are a single global consciousness. Yeah. A single brain. We're growing right up just like a small child right now. It's... Ah, this yeah. is an incredible, incredible TED Talk. Just please watch this TED Talk. Please watch yeah. this TED Talk. It'll One blow of the greatest your ones ever. mind. What else was involved in there? I'm not sure. I think that, that covered a lot of it. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> well, actually, we're saying that this is very along the lines of what we were talking about recently, like putting in uh, webcams in the house and actually recording yeah, everything right now. Yeah, was actually, as we were watching, there was one thing that you said that was pretty interesting. Um... Basically, you only start you only start living when you you're actually starting to be recorded. Yeah. Or is it you're only you're only born or whatever. Well, yeah. Life starts when you actually when, when you're, you're recorded. recorded. Yeah. Because before that, like like Ethan says in here, like our our biological brain tissue, our memory, biological memory is not capable of remembering anything. Like anyway, I'll, close. Also, I'm um, like a, a my uh, brother's like 21st kind of family birthday party thing, and they're showing all these family photos, and I just had absolutely no idea. I could not remember any of them. Showing all these photos, like I had no idea what happened then. Yeah. I was like that just. <laughs> it's I'm true. already freaking twenty three. Like, what is this? Like, I know it's it's true. Like, in all my life, I just can't remember it all the way back. Well, everything it has to be as soon as you're recorded, actually put permanently on there. That's going to be the computer's memory, the global yeah. memory, the hive mind's memory of you. Is only what the hive mind can access. Everything right now, luckily, because it's recorded right now, that'll be in there. But after we turn this off, after we finish with it, none yeah, of that'll be recorded lost. anymore. It's <laughs> totally lost into the ether. That'll never happen. Sure, you can make the argument that, you know, it impacts on everyone around you and on yeah. the minds and of the objects and all the Gaia theory, and it's lovely, but it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's very small impact. You can't measure it. I guess that's the... 
One thing he didn't uh, cover to. in this is like he did the he's you know, covering his son thing and then doing the hive mind type thing, but he didn't mention um you know recording it for say yourself like mm. right now as an adult like yeah. there is so much value. I was, I was even saying I was watching it, like there is so much business opportunity right here in the next couple <laughs> yeah. of years to offer these systems and analysis for people just random people. Because as an adult, you can actually, or anyone, as a teenager, adult, whatever, you can actually record all your thoughts and everything you say through it. and analyze, you know, because thoughts don't come, you know, you don't, we were saying before, like Einstein and Darwin. And let's imagine like recording in everything of Einstein and so he could progress, how he actually came up with the idea of relativity. You could piece together say, this is when he had the first inkling, this is the external stimuli yeah. he had, this is how his thought how progressed. progressed yeah. To this point. Because obviously he didn't just suddenly wake up one day and be like, like, ha-ha! Theory of relativity! <laughs> there you go. You know, the Eureka story running down the middle of the yeah, that fucking never street. Happens. That's bull. And even, work that way. and even then, uh, linking in with the Connections documentary, which we mentioned before, you should really watch. You could actually... With, back. With, <laughs> with, with every single human doing that on the planet, you can interconnect, oh, I got this piece of uh, little, little piece of incremental idea from this person, little piece of incremental idea from this person, I combined them together, came up with this idea, I did a little bit of more analysis, worked it up here. Yeah. You can track the flow of innovation and ideas and actually how we create new knowledge and new things in our Standing on the system. shoulders of giants. Yeah. It's awesome. So, <laughs> anyway, well, watch this epic, TED Talk. It'll blow you epic. away. Blow yeah. you away. Anyway, on the notion of hive minds, uh, what we're going to try and do for the next uh, few episodes and all that, we've noticed that we've been taking more of a hive mind approach to a lot of stories and to a lot of things. So we're going to try and reclassify this a little bit, I guess, into uh, singularity, singularity and the hive mind. Because we love the, the idea of the hive mind and analysing what they're talking about, what the current yeah. thing is, where the neurons are being strengthened the most. I think know. not enough people are talking about this, so... No, we should not. We should step up to the plate and yeah. do something about it. This seems important, but... I mean, why, are, why the fuck aren't Ben Gertz and all these AI researchers talking about hive minds? Hive minds are like, the intelligence. We're, like, everyone's like, oh no, we'll create an intelligence in a black box, like, you know, in a little computer system, yeah. that's where it'll be, like, you know, an IBM supercomputer, that's not where AI is going to come from. That's just silly. And yeah, we've bitched about this many we times. Have. Anyway, we have, we won't get into it again. <laughs> we've, but, still, we've still got a bit, we've just got to stop being the pretentious, like, bitchy, moany people and just say, I'm not... Uh, take charge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because like, yeah, we bitch about it all the time, like, why aren't they doing this? Why aren't right, they? No, like, okay, okay so fine. Do God damn it, we'll do it. Fuck you all. Yes, that'll be good We're fun. going to do it now. So, the first topic for this is going to be hive mind activism. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Hive mind activism. Hive mind activism. Um, the obvious is anonymous. Not, exactly. What have they been doing recently? They have been doing quite a bunch recently, which is why I quite think... Quite a bunch. Quite a bunch. Why, do which is why I think it's a fantastic thing to talk <laughs> about. Uh, anyway, the, the big one has obviously been H.B. Gary. Uh, this yeah. uh, security expert was uh, saying that he was going to take down Anonymous and uh, like destroy them. Uh, yeah, actually, I've still got little notes oh, here. Oh, yeah, fair enough. So I'll leave that one open. Uh, yeah, he said he was going to take down Anonymous and then Anonymous didn't really like that and they fucked his shit up. To put, it, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, and so that was kind of the beginning. And then a lot recently, it's been really interesting to watch because Anonymous has this site called like Anon News where you can actually like, you submit stuff. It's not by any one member. And then people can upvote and downvote what stories, what big leaks are going to come out. Oh, cool. But there have been a lot of recent ones. Uh, say uh, there was one about like the uh, Louis Vuitton bags. There was this, uh, there was this uh, image of that this lady created of an Ethiopian like starving kid holding a Louis Vuitton bag with like a, a chihuahua, like a little dog as well. And uh, yeah, everyone like Anonymous got really annoyed about that. I was like, yeah, let's do a big rage against it, a big rage against nice. it. And then it turned out it was three years old and then the rage just died. So you got the <laughs> rage like, you know, forming and then not happy. And a similar thing yeah. happened with the West Borough Baptist Church. Uh, West ba yeah, the, you know, Fred Phelps and all of that. The God evil, hates God hates guys. bags, yeah. guys. And uh, again, they, apparently that wasn't said by someone from Anonymous, but here's where it gets interesting. Oh, it's really? all meant to be anonymous, but how can it not be said from someone in anonymous? You're all anonymous. Everyone is anonymous. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's another bit of... Well, didn't they, like, they hacked her site on air? As yeah, in real time. Yeah. That was incredible. Well, isn't the... the oh, God, the recent one. Aren't they going to, like, um, protest a funeral of this family who lost, like, seven kids under 11 in a yeah. fire? Yeah. And everyone's like, what? And, and that's another... I saw Reddit, like, the big... You know, Reddit's probably the greatest hive mind we know of at the moment. Hmm. I mean, we need... If you don't classify Twitter and Facebook, because they're harder to measure, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they were saying in the comments, like, they're all coming, trying to come with ideas of, like, how to stop this, um, 
you know, yeah. funeral picketing protests from happening because that's just kind of like the lowest of the lows. Um, and obviously you can't just go out and beat the shit out of them. So what do you think? Because they're just lawyers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They came up with a lot of analysis there. I guess that's really the... I guess that is the hive mind right there. That like that that'd be a good thing to like analyze. Like these are just the beginning of hive mind activism. Yeah. What is the we should also do like the motivations. We've done the motivation of AI. Like what's the motivation, motivation of hive mind? mind? Yeah. Well, think. that's that'd be a great thing. Like yeah. why did things like say the Iranian revolution, like you know, the sort of Twitter yeah, revolution, what, what, what actually turned yeah. green, and all these other big things? Like obviously it, it goes against fundamental morals that we all share. Yeah. That has to be a big. It shows. Yeah. And and this is where like um this is where we always say that you know. AI motivations are going to be kind of fueled by human motivations. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what they are. Like we're we're very emotional creatures, and you know, we, if we see some wrong being done, we kind of empathise with it, and we want to stop that wrong. And we want to feel that we have like some power to do that, or something there. Like whereas yeah. say before, with uh, a lot of these things, we didn't actually have any power. Anonymous are like still even with that, we don't feel like we have enough power. But by putting out like downloading a little program like the low orbiting ion cannon, which is there, like you know. Uh, uh, blacklisted DDoS program that they use to take down websites. You feel like you can actually contribute. Oh, really? You can like download oh, yeah, the yeah, DDoS yeah. program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, just nice. do it yourself. Yeah, it's not do so that. fun. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it here because then, then they might find us. I'll go I behind don't know, I haven't checked. The proxy. Yes, the proxies. Yes. But the hive mind, like the actual activism through hive minds and stuff. I mean, obviously relating to politics and all of that there. But yeah. I really feel the most uh, where it's going to be feeling the impact most of all is just like the other wrongs of the world that don't relate to politics and to all of that, the stuff that's usually ignored, whereas now that we can actually have oh, a say right. like on a big global level, like the Louis Vuitton bags, I mean, even though that was three years old, I think that's a great example of, you know, a big wrong that people are like, this is a fundamental flaw in our society, someone have a look, yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> Especially you get all those um, stories where the mainstream news just does not cover it whatsoever. Exactly. And then someone will just, all they have to do is literally post up a YouTube video just yeah. showing that, you know, hey, look, someone's fucking someone over, mm. let's go get them. Like, the amount of, the amount of uh, uh, retaliation against people like throwing cats and dogs Dog, off exactly. bridges. Exactly. And the hive mind, they just like attack that, like, to the, to the point where it gets very kind of revenge <laughs> yeah. revengeful, like... It gets they, like, man, is getting a bit. Yeah, they, they, yeah, don't they, like, get all their personal details and then start, like, completely attacking Dusty them? Dusty the Cat was a big one. That was about yeah. this cat that they were torturing, like, in a bathtub, this little shit of a kid. And, uh, yeah, he was just a, a dick bag. And then they managed to track him down by seeing, like, the logo on one of these hats that was in a screen for, like, a split second. <laughs> they contacted the school. They did all of this crap because yeah. they were, like, you know, offending a cat. And no one would do that normally, like you couldn't do it, but people were like, fuck yeah, you're not going to attack a cat, and yeah. the hive mind destroyed that kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see that a lot. This is more. kind of a, this is kind of like, you know how you used to have, uh, kind of before, like, you know, in village type times, you'd have social vetting based on like, Right. Little, little social norms, like if you do something wrong, then the rest of the community would be like, no, you can't do that, Yeah, yeah. because that's bad. Now it's kind of happening on a global scale. Sure. If you yeah. do something wrong and it suddenly gets, if it gets onto the internet in any form, like video, text, whatever, yeah, then you're at the whim of kind of the global justice system. Yeah, global justice. A global, global justice system. That's that's in a bad way. Why don't, I mean, that's another point. Why don't? Why doesn't a justice system be like a global system? Well, because then it's revenge and it's not there. Like we saw how bad it could go. Yeah. I mean, especially if they get the wrong information, which happened with well, the other stuff. Yeah. Well, one interesting <laughs> example of this that just came out, I think today or yesterday, there was this girl at UCLA uh, actually bad-mouthing Asians for talking loudly on their phones. Yes. <laughs> we were listening to that. And my God, the hive mind has gone crazy. They've actually yeah. hacked her Facebook profile. They have like destroyed her in real life, posted up her personal information because she was like, you know, bad-mouthing like Asians and stuff. Yeah. Listen to the video. It wasn't that bad. Like, don't get me wrong. It was fucking racist, yeah. but it wasn't that bad. But again, it just offended the hive mind in just a certain way that they are like we are going to destroy her yeah and again more I mean that's not high level activism that's not going for a good cause that's just because well it's a good cause you know against racism but it's it's not like you know a, a cause that you'd yeah. see any mainstream media going over yeah why would you ever report that someone's being racist on mainstream media I mean mainstream media is racist <laughs> yeah that's an interesting thing do you think do you think the reason why the, the kind of internet hive mind has got this current cultural, you know, moral kind of standing already. Right. Like there is something there. You could probably like come up with a list of like, you know, like the internet's that. morals, the internet's I would values, really the internet's like to do that. The well the hive mind I, I like the word hive mind right the hive minds, yeah, yeah, whatever. Different hive minds say different stuff. But um do you think the reason that's happened is because the people who originally got 
onto the internet and kind of establish the culture of the... Because the hard money is really the internet. It's really integrated. Well, no, I think there's different ones, though, because you have had... I'm, I'm not sure just offhand, but I know you have had different, like, you know, big rebellions and all of that, like Conservapedia and all of on that. On the opposite side. On the opposite side. There are multiple okay. hive minds of people which working one, together. But surely the one... Surely the whole, the liberal side's kind of got more of a standing online. It probably does, but I think also think? conservative um, people, I could, I, I, that'll definitely rise. Like, I'll guarantee you that in the next few years and all of that, you'll start to see more of a conservative slant to all of that rising. Yeah, but it'll probably be more of a sane one, like, you know, the Ron yeah. Paul and stuff. Don't get me wrong, Ron Paul is the but, you know, the more but, actual conservative. Because, I mean, like, things like, um, like... Like, atheism has just been going amazingly strong on the internet. Like, yeah. I've heard quotes saying, like, you know, the internet's the place where religions go to die because you go on there and you're, like, you're suddenly exposed to information you were never exposed to in your little, you know... Bubble. Bubble. Town. And then suddenly, you know, you're... <laughs> you know, mo more people are becoming atheists because they're like, well, this is stupid, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Not trying to offend anyone because I remember... <laughs> I've offended people before, which is weird. South Australians. South Australians. <laughs> Uh, but no, no, fuck, fuck offending people. Fuck you. <laughs> Never used to do that. Never right. used to say sorry for offending people. Yeah, that's it. God damn it. Yeah, you're being controlled by the hive mind again. I know, I am. Like <laughs> posting funny shit on Facebook so I'll get likes rather than serious stuff that I'm actually interested in. Yeah, that's it. Well, see, post serious stuff to hive AI. That's, what, uh, that's what I've been doing. Is. Excellent. Except it gets very dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like the latest one I post is just like, oh. Man. Anyway, but um, the, the hive minds are going to be, I, I don't know, I, I think they're going to be a massive force in the future. I mean, we're already seeing the very beginnings of it now. Yeah. They're going off to stupid stuff. Like that, what we consider small, I guess, like Dusty the Cat and like, you know, all that other stuff. But they're the makings, now. Yeah, they're the makings of bigger things. Like, yeah. eventually, like we were just saying then, like, jokingly, like, they're going to probably, you know, decide the moral... Yeah, it covers of, a lot of things. Of society, of like all global society. Like, what should we decide is like, what is right, what is wrong... You know, it's a very pure form of it right there. Because, I mean, I, I generally agree with most of what they're doing, and I'd say most people would as well, because it's not actually told. It's it's very much from the grassroots. It's yeah. very much a growing team. But this is just going to be more and more... <laughs> this is going to grow larger and larger. But I, I'd watch out for the Anonymous, just I'm going to briefly end on this. Yeah. Is uh, Anonymous at the moment, uh, I've noticed, have actually been... People are like, hey, let's capitalize on the group Anonymous. Yeah. They released, like, you know, a letter. It was, on, like, out on news and stuff, saying... Oh yeah, let's be really good, and you have to be perfect, or we'll hack your shit and stuff. And it was just <laughs> embarrassing. It was nothing like normal, like anonymous releases and stuff. Yeah. And again, I think it was someone just saying that, hey, this would be really cool to actually popularize and actually put up there, yeah. but it's not by the same people who were anonymous before. That's why I think they should have an official site. No, but see, that that destroys the idea of what anonymous is. Yeah, but they is have it? one official site. They can still be anonymous, but still have official broadcasts. Well, I think that. that's why they're trying out on news, but then that yeah. was like corrupted a little. It just it doesn't have to be a site, just one channel where it's like, this is the official channel. Yeah, but the, the whole thing of Anonymous is that it's not official, that it's just anyone. You yeah, know, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't, yeah, then it's being corrupted, they need to change now. Yeah. They can't be dogmatic in their own structure and values and system. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it evolves. I, I think Anonymous is going to be demonized very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you guys have any ideas on the hive mindy type things, yeah. we want to try and go this more more of this angle, because um we think we've got something to kind of prove that you know the world something isn't to prove. The, not prove, but like I have I, the penis the size of a switch. <laughs> no, a then, light we need. Switch. We, we've been frustrated that this idea isn't getting out there, and we need to get it out there somehow. Like I don't care who picks it up. Like someone else can popularize it, just so long as it gets out there. I mean, it'd be great if we popularized it, but... I'd love it. Anything with the... the we don't have the faces for it, I don't think. Not really. <laughs> anyway, yeah. anything with the, the hive mind, please send us shit. It'll be great. Not literally. <laughs> In <Anyone>? the post! <laughs> we'll catch you later. Yeah. I'm Tristan Graves. I'm Nathan Waters. See you next week. See ya. Bye.